Random variable review part one, discrete random variables. Recall that a discrete random variable, we can list all the possible outcomes of the variable and assign probabilities to each. Also recall that a probability has to be a number between zero and one. And when I sum all the probabilities of a random variable, it should equal one. A random variable is a variable taking numerical values determined by the outcome of some chance process. The probability distribution of a random variable x tells us what the possible values of x are and how the probabilities are assigned to those values. Let's look at an example. So we have in a game of chance, the player picks a slip of paper out of a bag and wins the amount reported on it. Six slips of paper are marked, sorry, you win nothing. Three slips of paper are marked, you win one dollar. And one slip of paper is marked, you win twenty dollars. So our question at hand is, define a random variable w by w equals the amount won by a player on a single play of this game. Determine the probability distribution of w. Well, we said the probability distribution of a random variable lists the values that variable takes on and their corresponding probabilities. So we see that um, the amount one can take on the value of zero and six of the ten slips are marked with a zero. You can win one dollar and three of the ten slips are marked with winning one dollar and you can win twenty dollars and one of the ten slips is marked that. Notice that if I sum these values here, the probabilities must equal one. Our next part of the question says, find the expected amount one and standard deviation of the amount one in one play of this game. Well, before I write out my formula, I'm going to look at what I have here again. Let me move this up, and I'm going to put that into my calculator. So I have two, um, I opened up a list of spreadsheet, and uh, my first column I just called it W for one, and I listed the possible values that you could win. So they were zero, one, and twenty dollars. And then their corresponding frequencies or probabilities. And that was 0.6 chance of winning zero dollars, 0.3 for one, and 0.1 for twenty dollars. I'm going to insert a calculator page, and I'm going to go to menu, statistics, stack calculations, and I want to do one variable statistics. I only have one variable, the amount one. The other column, the probabilities or frequencies. Now, I want to choose one variable statistics, and number of lists means number of lists with a variable in it, so that should remain at one. I'll say OK, and it asks me where my X list is, and we call that W for winnings. The frequency list, how often each of those occurs, was in the list called probability, and we don't have a category list, so I'll just press OK. And so here we have our information. So we see here that the mean of our random variable is 2.3, and the standard deviation is about $5.92. So let's go back and see the amount of work we need to show for that. Okay, so I have my expected value of W, which another name for that is the mean of W, equals each amount times its corresponding probability. And we saw from the calculator that that was equal to $2.30. Our standard deviation of W, well, recall that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, and it's each value of the random variable, its distance from the mean squared times its corresponding probability. So the first one was 0.6, and my next uh, value was 1. It's distance from the mean squared times its corresponding probability of 0.3, and so on. And from my calculator, I got that the standard deviation of my winnings was approximately $5.92. So that's the work I need to show for this. And then a statement in context of what this means. In the long run, the expected amount won on a single play of this game is $2.30 with standard deviation of $5.92. How are the mean and standard deviation of a random variable affected by linear transformations? 
So what happens if I add or subtract a constant A to each observation in my data set? Well, if you recall, adding or subtracting A to measures of center and location, such as the mean, median, min, max, Q1 or Q3, just adds or subtracts that value. It does not change the shape of the distribution, and it does not change measures of spread, such as the standard deviation, the variance, the IQR, and the range. So I put together a little, a little fathom demonstration to show you that. So here I have a distribution with mean equal to 50 and st standard deviation equal to 5. And so the first line tells me this is the distribution I started with, my original S, with mean 49.8846, it was simulated, and the standard deviation. I'm going to look at transformations of the form y equals a plus bx. So right now I'm just going to see what adding or subtracting a constant a will do to uh, my mean and my standard deviation. So I'm going to take this value of a that I have here, and I'm going to, I'm going to move this along and see what happens. So notice what happens here, and I, I think I'll make this a nice number like 10. If I add 10 to every observation in my data set, I see that it just takes my original mean of 49.88 and adds 10 to it. And I notice right here that it does absolutely nothing to the standard deviation, and the shape of my distribution remains the same. The same thing would happen if I subtracted 10 from that. So you can see what happens. So adding or subtracting a constant just adds or subtracts that value to the mean of the distribution. It doesn't change the shape, and it doesn't change the measures of variability. Okay, let's go back. So our next part we want to look at is what effect is multiplying or dividing each observation by a constant v hat? And if you recall, Multiplying and dividing measures of center and location by B also multiplies and divides them. It also multiplies and divides the standard deviation by the absolute value of B, and it does not change the shape of the distribution. So let me change this A value back to 1, and we'll just investigate the effect that B has on the transformation. So if I take this B value and I double it, so multiplying each observation by 2, I see the effect of it, the original mean of 49.88 doubles. I also see that the standard deviation of 5.22 doubles. I notice it's a dilation of the graph. So both my mean and my standard deviation are affected by multiplying. If I had changed that and divided by 2 or multiplied by 1 half, I would notice a similar thing. I've got to move this down to see it. So it's a, a dilation of the graph. My mean of 49.88 gets cut in half, my standard deviation gets cut in half. All right, so let's look at an example. Suppose the owner of the game that we were playing is feeling generous and decides to double the winning amounts on each slip of paper. So remember, originally the winning amounts were zero, one dollar, or twenty dollars. Now we're asked to find the expected amount won and standard deviation of the amount won in one play of this new game. Well, one thing we could do is build a new probability distribution. So we could say, all right, so call this distribution D for doubled. So doubling 0 becomes 0, doubling 1 becomes 2, and doubling 20 becomes 40. And here are the corresponding um, probabilities. Notice that I already put it in a calculator, and I ran one variable statistics, and the mean was 4.6. Well, remember, our original mean was 2.3, and our standard deviation is about $11.84, and our original was $5.92. So the moral of the story here is that we didn't have to create a brand new distribution if we know the effect of a linear transformation on a random variable. We can just do it like this. We can define a new random variable, d, where d is just twice the winnings. So the mean of my new distribution D will just be twice the mean of my distribution W. And so I get the $4.60. And the standard deviation of my new distribution D is just twice my old distribution, or $11.84. So recap. For a linear transformation of a random variable X in the form Y equals A plus BX, adding a constant to each observation in the data set 
just adds that constant to all your measures of center, mean, median, et cetera, but does absolutely nothing, does not affect the spread, and the shape of the distribution stays the same. Multiplying each observation by a constant b multiplies the measure of center by b, and it multiplies the measure of spread by absolute value of b, since b can take on negative values. And again, the shape stays the same. What if I'm combining random variables? If x and y are two random variables, then the mean of the combined total x plus y just equals the mean of the distribution x plus the mean of the distribution y, and the same thing for subtraction. So in general, the mean of the sum of several random variables is just the sum of their means, and the mean of the difference of several random variables is the difference of their means, with of course the order of subtraction being important. But what about the standard deviation? If x and y are independent, and I bold that independent random variables, I need them to be independent to figure out the corresponding probabilities, then the variance of x plus y equals the variance of x plus the variance of y. Of course, to get the corresponding standard deviation, I would just take the square root of my answer. Now, here's the part that students often have trouble with. The variance of the difference of two distributions is still the variance of x plus the variance of y. When I combine two distributions, I don't get less variability. All the variability comes along for the ride. In general, the variance of the sum or difference of two independent variables is the sum of their variances. And recall, standard deviations never, ever, ever add. Variances add, but only if the two random variables are independent. Okay, so let's go back to our original game. Suppose a player plays this game twice. Find the expected amount 1 and standard deviation of the amount 1 in two plays of the game. Well, each play of the game is a random variable. Even though I know the long-run behavior, each play is a random independent event. Okay, so recall. We're going to build a probability distribution for this, but then we're going to just do it using what we know of random variables. So probability, so let's write this over here. The probability of any event happening is all the things I consider success over the total possible outcomes. So if I play this game twice, here's what could happen. Well, I could win nothing on my first play of the game with probability 0.6. And I could also win nothing on the second play of the game with corresponding probability 0.6, so I would have won nothing with this probability, and so my amount 1 times my probability would be 0. I could also have won 0 on the first and $1 on the second, 0 on the first, and $20 on the second. Correspondingly, I could have won $1 on the first, and either 0, 1, or $20 on my second play, with my corresponding probabilities over here, and the amounts won. And on the, the last possibility was to win $20 on the first play of the game, and that paired with either 0, 1, or 2. Notice that if I sum up this last column, the amount 1 times its probability, I get $4.60, which was just twice times the amount 1. And also that if I sum up the probabilities here for each of these events, that they'll sum to 1, which makes it a legitimate probability distribution. Okay? I put those into my calculator, and here's what we see. So the mean was $4.60. The standard deviation was $8.37. So each time you play the game, it's a random event. So let me reveal this. So the mean of playing the game twice, the mean of w plus w is just the mu of w plus the mu of w, or twice mu of w. The standard deviation of w plus w is the two variances added together, and then the square roots taken, and that's how I got that value. Here's an AP practice problem. You might want to pause the video and try the problem before looking at the solution. So here's the problem. 
And uh, you might want to pause now. I'm going to click to the solution, and you can unpause and click to it when you're ready to look at it. So here's the solution. One thing that I want to point out in the solution is that multiplying the standard deviation by b multiplies the variance by b squared. That's often a place where students make mistakes. And then last but not least, stay tuned for random variables part two. That'll be on combining normal random variables. And our last segment on random variables part three will cover binomial and geometric random variables. See you there.